Recently I made a series of video recordings of conversations I've had with other people in a kind of interview style uh, and I began using a professional microphone um, in order to get better sound with these videos and over time a number of people have said what are you using how did you do it because uh, I've been using my iPhone to record the video so I'm gonna tell you about how I did this and how you might be able to do it too so what I found was that in some environments there's a lot of ambient sound which means sound that's around you while you're interviewing because I'm in a place where I can't necessarily prevent there being extra sounds in the background people talking traffic whatever so I decided to use this microphone that I had for a long time uh, which is called the Electrovoice 635A. Now, I mention that in particular because this microphone has been around for over 40 years. It was a, um, brought out on the market in 1965 and they still sell it, so you can buy one. And um, if you come in and look here, you can see uh, that it's an omnidirectional dynamic microphone. So, omnidirectional means that this microphone can pick up sound from any angle around it. And that's good because when you're doing an interview with somebody, you don't want it to be too critical about how you aim it and how close you are to them. A reasonable distance, six to eight inches, is going to work probably just fine. And the word dynamic means that this microphone actually generates the signal that comes out the end from the power of the sound that reaches it. So there are no batteries. Uh, and this particular model is very rugged and it's very famous in the news industry. So I happen to have that one. And then the, the key to this is that I did a search online and I found this uh, device made by Rode, which um, is a converter, and it has a connector on the end with the three pins that the microphone uses on one side. On the other side, it has a lightning connector, which plugs into an iPhone. It's the only product I found that does this at this point in time. Uh, there may be others that come on the market, um, but I want to say two things about it. First of all, it only works with Apple iPhone products because they're the ones that have the lightning connector. I can't tell you about Android phones because I don't know the answer to that. There's probably other people out there who uh, found products to do this or maybe the products will be coming out soon. The other thing I want to say is, is that uh, we're doing this recording right now today in February of 2019 and there's news that Apple may be changing the type of connectors they use on their iPhones and uh, in the future it could be a different type, a USB-C for instance. So uh, there probably will have to be uh, an adapter which you'd use with this product or maybe the Rode people will come out with another product that uses whatever connector the iPhone has next. Now I also carry two other things with me. One is a microphone extension cable um, and this is a 10-foot one. I got this one from a company called Have in New York because they make the cables there in their own facility and they have very high quality, but you can get one from anywhere you, you uh, might want to get one from. I use 10 feet because I really want to be able to have a lot of room between where the microphone is and the adapter in some cases. And that brings me to the next piece, which is headphones. Um, the iPhone 6 that I have here has a separate audio jack but the ones after that have eliminated that jack. So you really can't put the headphones into the phone. And even if you do with the iPhone 5 or the 6, you don't hear the audio coming in through the lightning connector. All you hear is a little beep when, they start and, when you start and stop the video. So the best thing to do is monitor it here from the headphone jack that's built in to the uh, adapter. And this uh, headphones that I have here, the Sennheiser uh, 280, the connector unscrews so that you have a mini plug that fits right into the adapter and you can monitor sound. So that's useful if you have a third person who's um, recording the video, they have the adapter in their pocket, they have the headphones on, and they can be monitoring the sound to make sure the sound is, is of good quality, which one of the most common problems might be that the microphone is being held too far away or too close to somebody and you're getting a sound that's distorted and too loud or it's too weak from being too far away or there's some excessively loud environmental sound which is getting into the recording. So there are a number of ways you can use a kit like this. One of them is a kind of classic television interview where the person doing the interviewing is not visible in the picture, only the person being interviewed, in which case you can hold the camera 
and hold the microphone at the same time. It's a little bit tricky, but you can do that. Or you can hand the microphone to the person who is talking and let them hold it. Just make sure that they don't move their fingers around on the barrel of the microphone a lot because that'll be picked up in this particular model. You can use, there are other omnidirectional microphones that could be used that have a little better uh, in, um, resistance to handling noise. Um, that's one way you can do it. I prefer to do conversations where me as the interviewer or the, one of the two participants in the conversation is visible. So that means there has to be somebody else who's holding the camera. Um, and this is what took place when I went to the Women's March in Boston last month. Uh, I handed the camera to, I was interviewing this gentleman who's a teacher, I handed the camera to one of his students and they recorded the interview. Um, most people know how to use a cell phone on video if, and can compose a shot and keep the camera steady. It's not that hard and there are not that many controls to be confused with. Um, I did another uh, conversation where I was in the picture and the person who was supposed to be holding the camera was unavailable at the last minute. So uh, we improvised. Uh, I got some, someone went and found a music stand in the choir room and we got a roll of masking tape and we kind of rigged up the camera on the music stand with the masking tape and started it and we held the interview. That's conversation number three uh, that's on my website. So there's a number of ways that you can work with this arrangement. The main idea is that when I did other types of environmental video while I was at the Women's March, I was not using this microphone because I was picking up general sound from around the common and from the march area. So I just used the iPhone by itself and kept the microphone kit in the bag with me. One of the issues that comes up when you've sort of recruited someone to hold the camera while you're doing this is uh, sort of camera operator fatigue. They're holding the phone. Uh, up like this and it gets tiring if you have a long interview or something like that. So if you're indoors, you have outdoor furniture, anything like that, one of the things you can do is take a, a chair uh, and turn it around backwards and sit in the chair like this and then you can use the back of the chair to support your arms so that uh, they have something to rest on. Now if the chair is a lower back, your, your elbows can fit onto it or your forearms can fit onto it if it's a higher back chair like this. Now while I'm here doing this, I want to point out a couple of quick things about shooting a video besides getting the correct framing. Uh, one of them is to always hold the camera in the horizontal position or landscape position. Never ever shoot a video in the portrait mode or vertical position. The reason is, there's a lot of reasons actually. Part of it has to do with human psychology and the visual cortex in your brain, but also it has to do with almost every other screen that you're ever going to watch this video on is horizontally oriented, including TV sets computer screens and so on. So match the picture that you're getting with the phone with the kind of screen that it's going to be presented on. Very, very seldom does anybody watch anything serious on this format vertically. Uh, also, of course, most of you have figured out that you it's very easy to get your fingers in front of the lens, so do make sure hold it like this, so like making the letter C with your hand. And the same thing is true on the other side of the camera where the sound is being picked up by the built-in camera microphone if you're not using the interview kit, if you're outside or you're in a really quiet environment where you can record with the built-in camera microphone, make sure to keep your fingers away from blocking the grill work on this side of the camera. So now I'm using the system that we just talked about, and you can probably hear the difference between the quality of sound while I'm speaking directly into the microphone versus the rest of the room echo we got when we were just using the other camera. You can see here that there's a little green light, and that lets you know that everything is plugged in and working correctly even if you can't monitor the sound with headphones. So just to review, there's no battery needed in the microphone because it's a dynamic microphone. There's no battery needed in the converter because it gets its power from the iPhone. So make sure your iPhone is charged up fully and you have room in your iPhone in order to record your video before you go out with it in order to do that. Now I'm going to cover a couple other points about using this system which are on my open script here on the table uh, right now. So let's talk about the first one, and we can come in and take a look at that, if you will. Some understanding of journalism. When I say some understanding of journalism, I don't necessarily mean you have to have a journalism degree, but uh, before you begin some kind of project where you're going to interview someone or have a conversation, it's a good idea to have some idea of what the subject's going to be, how long you want your video to run, and who your intended audience is, and how to cover some of the headlines in the beginning, or the, the initial idea or, or scope of your conversation, uh, before you get into the details. There's a lot more to journalism than that, of course, but I'm just trying to say 
get some background maybe if you want to do a good job of doing this kind of thing, something that I've studied in the past myself in my long career of doing video production. The next thing we talked a little bit about was having another person to hold the camera or finding some way to support the camera. I don't have a miniature tripod at this point in time that's meant to hold my iPhone, so I always have to get someone else or rig something up uh, using available materials. But you can, there are a number of things online you can buy which can uh, be mounted, uh, have a phone mounted in it and have little legs or clamps or something like that in order to be able to fix it if you don't have somebody to hold it for you. The next thing is when you get done with the video, there are probably going to be places where there are outtakes, extra little bits of sound or video that were taken that you don't want in the final movie. You might want to take uh, things out of order, whatever. So you really ought to have some practice with a video edit system. I use either iMovie or Final Cut Pro because I use Apple products. Um, but there are other ones out there, and you can do some editing right on the cell phone in some cases if you want to keep it simple. Maybe even add some titles or something like that. Um, the next thing is practice. Now I recommend that you get plenty of practice with a system like this before you go out to do something that you really care deeply about and want to put on online or on the air or whatever. In other words, interview a family member or a friend or whatever and cover a subject that's you're not necessarily going to use anywhere just to figure out what it's like to do this with this system, how long somebody can hold the camera, what it sounds like, what your own voice sounds like, and all the other things that might come up when you're practicing. Based on the principle, make one to throw away. Just videos that you might eventually delete. Doesn't make any difference. Just so that you're comfortable and familiar with the setup when you go out to actually use it on something that you really care very much about. The last thing on my sheet is what I call the channel. And that has to do with where's your video going to go out to your viewers. And that could be your local cable TV access studio. It could be one of the big um, video sharing services like Vimeo or YouTube, or it could be something that you show to an audience using a projector or a screen. Um, it's important to think about that a little bit before you get started so you have some idea who your audience is, where they're going to be, and what contact you have with them to explain your video if necessary, and so on. Um, and you're going to have to set up an account if you don't have one with one of those services if you want to use them or if you want to put it on your local cable station you're going to have to contact the people in the studio so make sure you have some idea of how you're going to do that before you go out and make your interviews or conversations if you have questions about what you just saw please contact me at my website openeyesvideo.com in the upper right corner there's a little menu item that says contact us and that will send an email to me or you can leave comments if you're watching this on a video service in the comments section below. If you like this kind of video and you hope that I make more about a variety of how-to subjects or the conversation series that I've also been working on, please donate to my Patreon account and the link is on my website and may also be on the comments under this video. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you next time.